I have a confession to make. I have never played a Halo game before. You could count all the hours I've put into all seven games on one three-fingered hand, and I have no idea why. For whatever reason, when I was younger, my stupid child brain just decided to not like these games, and I refused to give them the time of day. But now that I'm a little bit older, but just still just as dumb, and with Halo Infinite looking really good, I thought it was about time to go back and marathon all seven Halo games, and maybe even watch that one weird Halo 4 miniseries movie thing that premiered on Machinima. So to start this marathon, let us take a look at the Xbox launch title that started it all, Halo Combat Evolved, specifically the Anniversary Edition in the Master Chief Collection, which adds in some updated assets but still pretty much keeps the gameplay the same. Halo Combat Evolved, which I'm going to refer to as Halo or Halo 1 from now on, released on November 15, 2001 as a launch title for the original Xbox to pretty much universal critical acclaim, and this was considered one of the best games for its time, and there is no question that this is one of the most influential games to have ever come out. I don't think first person shooters would be the same if it wasn't for this game, and for that it's hard to not respect it. But just because it's one of the most important games ever made doesn't exactly mean it still holds up 19 years later. So that is what I am here to do, to see if this game is still worth playing in 2020, or if you should just watch a plot summary on YouTube and get right to Halo 2. So here is my review for the game that started one of the biggest and most popular video game franchises to have blessed this industry, Halo. Combat Evolved. The first thing I want to praise is that the Anniversary Edition has completely redone all of the visuals, to the point that the game almost looks completely different. But the really cool thing is, is that you can switch between the remastered and the original graphics just at the push of a button, which really allows you to see exactly how much effort they put into this game's visuals. And this is like the textbook definition of a small unnecessary feature that I barely use. And if excluded, I probably wouldn't have even thought twice. But it really makes me happy that it's here, and I really wish that more remasters slash remakes would do this more often. The story is quite good as well, not because of its depth that can be seen in the other games in the series, but more because of its simplicity. When it comes to games that focus a lot on gameplay, I really like a more simple story just to get me into the action faster and to keep me there. I call this an excuse plot, something that just exists just to give you some context for what you were doing and to help keep you pointed in the right direction. But they still do a very good job at staying out of your way. All of the cutscenes in this game are quite short and pretty few and far between, but one thing that I really like that Doom 2016 also nailed is that even though on the surface the story seems quite simple, if you look a little bit deeper, there's a lot of lore and history to this game, through these optional terminals that can be found and interacted with throughout the game's world. One of my favorite things that a game could do is give the player agency on how much story they want to consume. So if you really love the lore in this game and you want to know more about it, you can by seeking out these terminals. But if you're more like me who plays video games more for the gameplay than the story, then you could just skip all that. Not to say I don't like a good story, because I do, and we'll be going more into that as I get further into the series. But for this game's story, it stays quite simple. You play as an uber badass named Master Chief, and you get stranded on a ring-like planet called Halo. Your first task is to rescue all of your fellow soldiers as you slowly learn more about the place. You are then tasked with destroying Halo after you learn that Halo is in fact a weapon that is meant to destroy the Flood. It has one pretty good twist towards the end, but for the most part, that's about it. And that is exactly what I like. It's a fast and fun story about landing on a mysterious planet, learning about it, then finally having to destroy it. The whole game story could easily be a 45 minute episode of Doctor Who. It's the fun sized candy bar of video games. It's something small that you just pop into your mouth, eat real quick, and then move on to something else. And especially nowadays where all games seem to want to be this 45 hour long epic, it's super refreshing to just play something that's shorter and more simple. I know that these game stories get a little more complex within its sequels, and that's great, and I'm looking forward to that. But even after all is said and done, I'm guessing that I'm still going to have a soft spot for how this game tells its story. One of the bigger things that this game nails is just how badass it makes you feel and how it makes the player feel like they are a cog, albeit a pretty big cog in a much greater war. A lot of games could struggle with this by making you feel like everything is revolving around you, but not here. There are just so many times in which you will walk into a room and there'll be this big chaotic battle going on, and it can be quite fun to even just sit back just to see who wins, or you can intervene and show everyone who the real badass is. Which brings me to my next point. This game makes you feel like a complete and utter badass and it doesn't let you forget it. Whether it's from the respect that all of your fellow soldiers show you, or from you being a one-man army that just plows through countless hordes of enemy soldiers, or by literally saving all sentient life in the whole galaxy. This game is one of the best examples of a power fantasy, and that is only helped by just how alive this game's world feels, as a result of all those tiny little battles that you can wander into. That power fantasy, and with that feeling that you're a part of a much greater war, 
really gives this game a fun atmosphere that just made me enjoy my time in this game's world. Now on to the gameplay. Halo is an old school first person shooter to its core and with the exception of a few vehicle sections, you're mostly just running around shooting things in the face. And I love it. I have always had a soft spot for old school shooters. I just love how simple they made the combat. There is nothing here to complicate anything. And even though I really love how much this genre has evolved with games such as Doom Eternal that adds in a bunch of new mechanics and systems that all work really well and are super fun, it's still nice to play something much more simple where the most complicated thing that you have to worry about is this game's health system. And in terms of the older first person shooters, this is one of the best. Almost everything this game does is better than most. The weapons, the enemies and their AI, the super revolutionary health system is all great and still holds up to this day. First, the weapons. There isn't a lot of them, but they are all very unique and behave very differently from one another. The game has mastered the quality over quantity philosophy when it comes to weapons. You have the UNSC weapons, which are your more conventional weapons such as your pistol that is accurate and does high damage, the assault rifle that doesn't seem to do a lot of damage per bullet but has a very fast rate of fire and a lot of ammo, the sniper rifle that has low ammo but has great range and does a lot of damage, and of course the rocket launcher that does what any good rocket launcher does, shoots a big ass projectile that eviscerates anything that has the misfortune to come in contact with it. And finally my personal favorite weapon, the shotgun. This is not only the best weapon in the game, this is one of my favorite shotguns in any video game. First, this thing just melts anything that is in front of it, and I never got tired of killing the flood with it. The thing will even kill hunters quite quickly, which are the strongest enemies in the game. I even just love how Master Chief reloads the thing. He just does it so fast, and that combined with the awesome sound design that this game has, made me feel like a badass just mowing through the enemies like a god that I am. Next, you have the Covenant weapons. First, we have the plasma pistol and the rifle that are similar to the UNSC counterpart, but instead of a reloadable magazine, they are battery powered that has to cool down. But if you max it out, it takes a long time to cool down so you have to be careful, which requires the player to pay attention to what they are doing so they don't overheat the gun. They are great at taking out shields, easily making them the go-to weapon when fighting the government. Then you have one of the most iconic weapons in video games, the Needler, which is the only weapon that I just didn't use very much because I didn't really like it that much. Not to say it's bad, because it's one of the best weapons in the game, it just didn't really fit with my play style at all. The gun works by shooting a bunch of small projectiles that stick to enemies that then explode. It is quite effective at killing Things, especially if you're able to hit the enemy with all of the needles. But for me, I just have never really been that big of a fan of weapons that have a delay before the bullets take effect. Then finally you have the grenades that more or less work the exact same way that all grenades work in games. The only interesting thing is that you have the sticky ones that are very useful. And that is pretty much it. You have some turrets that do turret things, nothing really new here, and vehicles that I will talk a little bit more about in a bit. But like I said, there aren't very many weapons, but the ones that are here are quite different and they all seem to have their advantages and disadvantages to them. Next, I want to talk about the enemies. Similar to the weapons in this game, there aren't a lot of them, but the ones that are here are all very unique and well paced out. On the Covenant side, you have the Grunts, the Jackals, which are those annoying ones with the shields, the Elites, and the Hunters, which are the strongest enemies in the game. And for the Flood, you have the small Horde guys, the bigger guys that can charge or shoot you, and then the Sack ones that explode, shooting out a bunch of the smaller ones. And that's about it for the enemies. Like I said, there isn't a whole lot of them, but they are all very different and have to be approached in different ways, with the Grunts being like the best enemy mean any video game. First, they are just adorable and quite funny with the sounds that they make and how they run away in fear when you kill some of their friends. They are also so much fun to fight with the little flip that they do whenever you kill them, which really helps making you feel like a complete badass with how fast that they are to kill and how many of the little buggers the game throws at you. It's what makes you feel like that one man army single handedly murdering hundreds of enemies, even though most of that number is just the flood and the grunts, but that doesn't stop the game from making me feel like a god. Finally, one of the best changes that this game makes and we could still see in video games to this day is the health system. This game pretty much started the regenerating health trend that is in most modern day first person shooters. But even then, this game still did it better than a lot of games even today, with how it has two health bars, your real health and your shields, where your shields regenerate and your real health doesn't. I have always preferred when games put in a hybrid of both regenerating and non-regenerating systems, so the player can't just break a save where they accidentally walk into a room with a bunch of strong enemies with one HP left and instant die right after a save point. It gives the player a fighting chance. Also, with the regenerating health, the player is no longer forced to have to stop fighting just to go and look for a health pack, which helps keep the player in the action more, making the game a lot more exciting. But with there still being a health system that doesn't regenerate, it keeps in the penalty for taking damage 
damage and making mistakes. So if the player is careless and makes a mistake, taking a bunch of damage by an elite that loses that non-regenerated health, which is a sizable percentage of the player's health, it might make the game harder for them in the next room when they have to go up against two hunters. So by having a hybrid, it keeps in the benefits and takes out the disadvantages for both systems, such as keeping in the penalty and punishment for making mistakes, but also gives the player a chance even though it might be harder, or by not requiring the player to have to stop the action just to find a health pickup. Unfortunately, it's not all good. There are some dated parts to this game that haven't aged as well as I would have liked. Even though it does a lot right with the health, enemies, and weapons, there are a few poorly designed aspects to this game that kind of do slightly make it a little bit of a harder recommendation. There are four things that kind of drag this game down a little bit. That is the level design, the mission structure, the vehicles, and the biggest of all of them, the one-hit kills. First, the level design. This one might be just a me problem with me being very navigationally challenged, meaning that I get lost a lot, especially in video games. It's even kind of amazing that I'm even able to navigate my own house without a map. I find myself getting lost a lot in this game. It's not so bad that I was wandering around the place for hours just trying to find out where to go. Most of the time it would only take me a couple minutes, but it still happened a little bit more than I would have liked it to. The worst example of this is in the Mission 343 Guilty Spark, which is already pretty maze-like within the design. But the worst part is that every room looks the same, with there being like three different room types just copy and pasted four times throughout the mission. It was just so easy to get turned around, and I don't know about you, I hate getting lost in video games. I don't find it fun or challenging to not know where to go. The game is far from the worst example, however, I still wish the objective marker showed up a little more often. When it does, it's very helpful, and I don't understand why it's only there sometimes and not others. The next thing that bothered me is the mission structure. It can be very repetitive at times, with objectives that can just go on for far too long, such as in the mission, the library, which for me was like an hour-long mission of just doing the same thing over and over again. Basically, the entire mission is for you to follow this guy through some of the samiest and blandest corridors ever on your way to a room called the Index while fighting through hundreds of the Flood. The mission could have easily been 10 minutes long and it would have had the same effect, and the game is just kind of filled with these long objectives like this. Another example is towards the beginning of the game, right after you land on the Halo, you have to drive around the place looking for other crash pods of soldiers, and when you do, you have to fight a couple small waves of enemies, and you do that for just a little bit longer than I would have liked. And it's hard to not think that the game purposely stretches out these objectives just to help make the game a little bit longer, but even then, it never bothered me that much. With just how much fun the combat was, it never felt like a chore and even for missions like the library, it was still a blast to play through because of how much fun it was to shoot the flood in the face with a shotgun. The game also reuses a lot of environments and rooms. There are even levels in the last third of the game that are the exact same as the levels in the beginning. Just this time around, you're going through it backwards and there's a bunch of small mini battles between the flood and the covenant. And to be fair, this wouldn't even be that big of a problem because it does do a good job at showing you how much of a threat the flood can be and how fast they multiply and how that makes him so much stronger than everyone else except you. So even though you are just going through the same levels, it does have a very different feel and atmosphere to it. Unfortunately, with some of the copy and paste level design, the reusing of rooms, and the overly long mission objectives, it's hard to not think that maybe the reason we had to go back to these old levels is just to help make the game longer. But even then, it's not that big of a deal. For the most part, the game was still a lot of fun to play, and that really didn't detract from it. However, the same cannot be said for my two biggest problems in this game. That is the vehicles and the one hit kills. These both did a very good job at detracting from the game and my enjoyment of it. The vehicles especially. The Warthog may be the worst vehicle I have ever had the displeasure of driving in my life. Like I'm talking Mako from Mass Effect Bad. The thing constantly feels like it's driving on ice. I felt like it was driving me more than I was driving it. And the worst part is, is that there are times that you have to use the thing. Like in the beginning of the game when you have to go find your fellow soldiers. Or at the end of the game when you have to get off of Halo. Which makes what should be one of the best and most climactic parts of the game into probably the worst just because of the Warthog. The other vehicles are still bad, but nowhere near as undrivable, such as the Ghost, which is also very floaty in its controls, but at least it has an excuse this time, with it literally floating and hovering in the air. At least with the Ghost, I wasn't constantly fighting the thing, and at times, I even found it fun to drive. But there were still times in which I would get stuck on the terrain, and I would have to find a way to turn the thing around, which was quite clunky and didn't feel right. Then we have the Banshee, the flying one, which is probably the best vehicle in the game, but let's be fair, that's not saying very much. Even though I suck at driving the thing because it's the least used vehicle in the game, it was the only vehicle in which I could kind of see myself getting good at with enough time and practice. But I still hate all of them, and whenever the game wants you to use it, it becomes the worst part of the game. Finally, we have my biggest critique, the difficulty. This game is hard, and not really in a good way. The game likes to equate difficulty and challenge with walking into a room and getting immediately eviscerated by the tiniest explosion ever from some rocket 
grenade that you didn't even see. And this is a game that loves its explosions, so I bet you're starting to see where the problem arises. I like a challenge and all, but one hit kills aren't challenging, they're punishing and in the worst way. And later into the game, explosives become more and more common. This game seems to want to go to a much more chaotic combat system with you having to get involved in already in progress firefights, explosions going off all over the place, bodies flying, and just a whole lot of enemies fighting you at the same time. And I'm fine with a lot more chaotic combat. In fact, I love them. One of my favorite games of all time is Mercenaries 2, which perfects the over-the-top, bombastic combat with there just being so many explosions, cars flying all over the place, and a lot of people shooting you at once. But here's the big difference for why Mercenaries 2 Chaos is so much fun, and where I find Halo so frustrating and stressful. In Mercenaries 2, nothing can kill you in one hit. And I mean nothing. A literal nuke can drop right on your head, and you will only drop down to 2 HP. But with there being so many enemies and explosions, the game never feels easy with that. And you still want to avoid getting hit by a rocket at all costs. So here's what I would like Halo to do. First, put in a grenade indicator. That way I know if some sneaky bastard throws a one hit kill my way. I still found it pretty easy to identify when an enemy throws a grenade, so it wasn't like I was getting blindsided by them that much, but it still would have made my life a lot easier if there was one. Then more importantly, just get rid of all of the one hit kills. Instead of explosions and that one plasma sword insta-killing you, they should just take out your shields completely. That way the explosions still do a lot of damage, but you aren't going from alive with full shields to insta-dead once you turn the corner. The only thing that kept me from getting too frustrated is that there are no loading times between deaths. After you die, you just pop right back to your last checkpoint. But before I can end this, I think we should end on a high note, and that is the music. What can I say that hasn't already been said? The music in this game is nothing short of phenomenal. Every track in this game is excellent and does a great job at hyping you up to go and slaughter a bunch of Covenant soldiers. And the main song is arguably the most iconic song in video games, that or the Super Mario Brothers theme. So much so that even people that don't play video games still probably know it. Even before I played this game, I would still get that song stuck in my head and find myself humming it. And not a lot of other songs have done that other than maybe the me theme, but that song is a virus where I actually like the Halo one. And that is Halo Combat Evolved. What a fun game that still holds up quite well even to today's standards. Sure, it has its problems when it comes to the level design, the damage model, and of course that was godforsaken vehicles, but there's just so much that this game does well from the weapons, enemies, the enemies, AI, the story, the feeling that you're in a war, how much of a power fantasy this game is, the regenerating health, even the music, and just so much more. And that combined with a very sad satisfying old school combat system, this game is a very easy recommendation. It's not perfect, far from it, but it's still a really fun, short and sweet adventure to destroy this big ring-like planet, never overstaying its welcome. So if you were like me that has yet to play through this series, this is a great place to start, and I cannot wait to see what the rest of this series has to offer.